Hi, Nalini. And hi, everybody. A very good afternoon, good morning, good evening, whichever part of the world you belong to. This is Ritika Chaudhuri, founder director of the Palette Art Training and Consultancy, a Dubai based art training and consultancy company, uh, as part of the uh, Global Visual Art Committee of DLC, and to, to have such lively discussion on art and art investment in the world and in India. It's such an exciting topic. Uh, so just to give a little idea about what I do is that we are based in Dubai. We are an art school, accredited art school here. We teach all sorts of art. We do um, uh, corporate projects. We do uh, team building workshops. We do regular workshops. Uh, and we do promote art and artists uh, throughout the globe. Middle East, India, and the other parts of the world. Basically, it's a platform which gives all sorts of um, art-related activities and to promote art. And uh, we have been here for the last seven years, and it's been a very, very exciting journey with the patronage of the Dubai and the UAE government who are so art-friendly and they're doing their best uh, to, to help artists and to flourish art in this part of the world. And um, I, I am actually just a passionate artist who learned most of the part of art by myself, self-taught. And in a few occasions, I had the opportunity to be in touch with a few people, a few very, very renowned artists. So that's how I started my art journey at the age of five. Uh, and I was a journalist throughout my life, but um, yes, I mean, somewhere in the line, you, you should follow your passion. And that's how I'm here today uh, uh, with Palette and just following my passion and love for art and uh, uh, to see how, how I can improve the art scenario in, in Dubai and how I can help with the people here to learn serious art and to pursue their dream to become an artist. Uh, thank you once again very much, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to be a part of this very, very exciting and prestigious group. Hi, Ritika. I'm so glad to finally meet you because we've been having these conversations and we've been talking to each other, but now we get to um, meet here virtually, uh, which is wonderful. And uh, a big hello to everyone in all parts of the world. It is... Uh, it's an honor and a privilege to be a part of this conversation today. I am a member of the DLC Global Visual Arts Committee, and uh, I have been working in the arts industry for almost uh, 20 years now. So I come from a corporate background, but it so happened that I took a break. And then uh, after that, you know, uh, I used to paint uh, like you, Ritrika. I used to paint uh, right from childhood. But I guess at some point, you know, in uh, when we were young, having an arts career was not uh, the in thing. So that didn't happen. Uh, but uh, I'm glad that later on in life, uh, my passion found me and art was something which I could actually pursue. So what I've been doing is... Uh, I started with freelancing. Uh, I used to write for Times of India and then uh, several other newspapers. Um, I was writing for art magazines also. Uh, slowly over a period of time, what I began doing is art consulting as well, because I was uh, doing this uh, column for, uh, I had this section in Financial Times where I would uh, follow the art market and write about you know, um, the auctions and the trends and uh, what was going on um, in terms of the uh, financial part of the, the business and the commercial side of art. Um, that was one of the activities that I was doing. Apart from that also, what I was, uh, uh, slowly I got involved in was curation. So I have curated several art exhibitions and uh, I also curate uh, contemporary art collections for corporates. So that is an area which is uh, in the last few years I've been focusing on uh, that along with the um, public art projects. So we've just completed one small public art project here in Bangalore. Soon I hope I'll be able to share uh, photographs uh, from that. Uh, I think as we go along in the conversation, I will be able to, I think, uh, connect all of these activities and also establish 
why these are so important and relevant to art investment also because it's not art investment is not a field which is uh, uh, separate or uh, you know it is uh, very much integral to all of the activities that we in the arts industry are doing and we have to find ways to further integrate them in such a way that it becomes uh, a more popular option there is more art awareness and uh, people become more knowledgeable how they can go about investing in art so uh, why don't we start off with the uh, today's uh, conversation yeah actually you have already started it and that's a lovely way of saying that why art investment and and uh, this is indeed for the couple of years i not i should say for the couple of decades the whole scenery of art changed throughout the world it's not that people never used to invest art in the art earlier but the awareness the attitude the perspective the understanding of investing it has become more uh, logical more uh, you know thought provoking and interest of the people and as an alternate mode of investment art that that is something which is which has become uh, more uh, i should say relevant in the last two decades uh, like you rightly pointed out that this is a very organized uh, sector in terms of where you can invest in uh, not that the entire sector is organized that's where uh, especially in the uh, indian context there is uh, there is a lot which needs uh, work right from policy level to the um, grassroots level but i guess unless we have these kind of conversations you know uh, things will not move so it's a great way to uh, start this off yeah it needs so you know so uh, what is what, what do you think that if if we start first with a country closer to our heart india that how do you think that uh, you can uh, i mean um, other people of india the generally the government the supporting group can help improving the scenario of indian art and art as an investment to create more awareness what are the things necessary um so before i go on to that what i would like to uh, talk about is a little bit about uh, how the um, the scale of the market let's say you know when we're talking about the indian art what is the size what are we looking at and um, some of us have been through the uh, boom period and then the recession which happened in uh, 2007 8 that has unfortunately left a very long lasting it has had a long lasting you know effect on the uh, market the repercussions of which are still felt to this day but having said that there are plus points to it also so when we look at you know the size of it for instance and uh, rithika you can then bring out the global art market size because um, i think the comparison is actually quite shocking you know the the sizes that we're looking at the uh, for instance i have these numbers here and so i'm going to have to read that the average price for a contemporary art piece um in the west was 26000 to 27600 dollars so the median in 2019 was around 1300 dollars now we're going to come to what the indian market is like you know um so before that 2013 14 were very good years in fact favorable for contemporary art and i will i am mentioning contemporary art because we'll be able to see the difference in india specifically um where the market is completely dominated by the modernists in fact almost 90% is dominated by the uh modernists so less than 5 5 to 10% might be in contemporary art so this is an area which needs a lot of work so there when we were looking at 2013 14 we had uh, you know the jeff coons balloon dog the orange one actually right. um, that right. sculpture had sold for 58 million dollars that was the highest priced work at the time for a living artist in a secondary auction the current now the records which are there um uh, davinci salvatore mundi is actually in 2017 that is almost 500 million usd okay so yeah. whereas yeah, here so coming to yes. india the the painting which is the artwork which is highest which sold for the you know 
the an astronomical amount, as we like to say, was Gaiton days, and it sold for a whopping forty-two crores. That's it. That's in rupees. So the disparity here is amazing. You know, the Indian market now it's supposed to be somewhere around uh, thousand to twelve hundred uh, um, crores. And paintings actually dominate the market. And this is the reason I mentioned the uh, Jeff Koons, you know, that was a sculpture which went for that kind of a price. Whereas in India, we have uh, paintings dominating. And uh, also to remember that the numbers that we're looking at are all from the secondary market. So these are just auction figures. What we don't have, we do not have a system where we are tracking the uh, primary sales or, uh, you know, uh, sales from uh, galleries. So that is not available. Um, so obviously we're looking just at the um, secondary market for these artists. Absolutely, Nalini. You know, when you are talking about, in fact, when I was going through some of the statistics and, and I was just intrigued to know that why, why there is no name of India. Even today, US yeah. is the top market. So for art auctions and investment are concerned with 43% uh, the overall market share in the world. And can you believe it? Who is next? China. And, and, uh, and the third is the UK. That is UK. And the yeah. fourth probably is France. You know, so that's that's how I mean. Where whereas we thought about, uh, you know, the Europe. When you think about art, Europe is the, um, you know, the pilgrimage of art. Uh, whether you call it Italy, whether you call it France. So, but uh, when you consider the auctions and the investments and overall the transactions in that field, you are still dominates the market, and. Uh, it is it is today it's around 64 65 billion worth of the market in in the in the world you know there has been some deep i will again quote some figures there that the right now the global art market is around 65.1 billion us dollars in 2021 before that i think till 2018 19 the art market was growing uh, at a very, very rapid speed. And yeah. uh, there, there is a huge you know, demand in the art market. So as I said that um, India is 43%, China is around 20% of the global sales and United Kingdom is around 17%. So I think it's time for India to wake up and take art market and art investment in a much more you know, the organized manner, as you said, or at least collect, collect the data that is available to, to let people know that how rich is our art heritage and even our market can be as big as uh, any other country. So what was interesting is that, you know, uh, when I was looking at some of these uh, numbers, um, in one place, I think I came across that the Indian art market size is 0.5% uh, of the global market. Um, so even if, you know, let's say 0.5 is just too low and maybe it's 1% uh, it's or 2%. But still, just look at the disparity, you know, the amount of uh, difference that exists. And... Um, Somewhere along the line, I think we have to build that awareness and we have to make it viable. So they, like, you know, the topic is that how art can be a safe investment. I think once people start looking at it, when more processes are in place and um, the collectors look at it, that it is viable. It is something which they can uh, consider doing and investing in Indian art. Um, this, this scenario could change and it should change also absolutely uh, just one um, uh, uh, question that i would like to ask you is that before going into the uh, issues of uh, i mean how do we consider the long term you know and what are the reasons why should people invest in art uh, why do you think that the art market despite being one of the most oldest and traditional, but only 0.5% of the world and the art investment is also low. Is it due to the awareness? I think it is largely due to the awareness. And also when you consider the, the, the gallery system and uh, a more formal uh, you know, uh, marketing system, the promotional and marketing system, which came into uh, being or existence, um, 
it's just a few decades old so that is what is going to you know take time to build up to build the momentum and uh, to also i think uh, somewhere along the line we are not able to invest in culture art and culture is an investment and it has to be done right from like i had said earlier from the government at the policy level and also at the grassroots level where if you consider the number of artists that we have but for how many of them is it you know viable to actually um even survive on just uh, just art so that's one of the things secondly for instance uh, i'll just give you a couple of examples uh, for um, you know abroad uh, most countries they have the there is this culture of corporate art collections it's very new right. still and right. uh, yeah um the advantage is there is i think you um you benefit in several other ways by investing in art so for instance if you needed uh, to if you needed money for your business urgently let's say you could put up your art uh, as a collateral and yes. uh, take a loan out on that now this is something which is um, it's not it's not happening in india at the moment so there have to be there has to be incentives to for people and for both hnis and uh, for corporates to actually come and invest in art only then it becomes viable and sustainable so uh, those are some of the challenges i think we are facing you are absolutely right i i think one of the reasons it's not only india but if you look at it art in general as a long term investment it's it's sort of yeah. a little bit of lack of awareness in uh, with the people uh, while corporates are much more educated and uh, learned about this aspect but as you rightly said in india corporate sector it doesn't happen but in quite a bit of other parts of the world western countries europe uk and uh, to a certain extent i mean us of course is there that a huge part of corporate the sponsorship the you know the way they come forward and invest in art uh, the emerging artists the old artists you know so that makes so that uh, you know that makes a difference why the art market is that big in those part of the world now one of course needs to understand little bit about art as a long term investment how so i should say it is somewhere similar to any sort of investment but quite a bit different from the normal stock market investment or mutual fund investment or um, property investment because uh, for art it is indeed long term means it, you cannot sell i mean you will not get the appreciation within a year or two which usually happens in case of stock market sometimes in ca case of very lucrative properties but in art it's a long term investment and what the experts say is that it takes almost 10 years at at some part the tenure of 10 to 15 years for the yeah. investment to to mature so that is one aspect of the investment art as investment number two is that why invest in art number one is that it of course it enhances the culture of the country it helps uh, you know maintaining the tradition and old heritage of the country and also it encourages the young artists who are coming in the market and producing fantastic pieces now having said that um uh, one also needs to understand that because the nature of art as an investment is slightly different and the gestation period for appreciation is slightly long one needs to have the patience and understanding about the market uh, what is good for a, what is good for the country i mean when you are if you are thinking of investment and and to sell it within your country the every every country has its own culture and the way how they depict art like this uh, just to give you an understand that in the middle east you know you will see a lot of art which is got getting recognitions in the market they are the those arts which are conveying the character of the culture of this uh, 
uh, you know, part of the world. So while there is a global appeal to art investment, there is a local aspect towards it. And, and also another thing we need to understand that um, there are two other things. One is that only while the corporates can invest in art because they have the means and the resources to do it, while in, I mean, and the individual collectors, so to say, of you know, course, those, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, they are the big kind of share, I think, and they are the people next to the corporate is the individual. There are, uh, you know, individuals who, who, who invests crores and millions and billions in art. And, and, and up, apart from that, if you think of art as a long-term investment for people, even those who love art, the, one of the most important premises is that you need to understand because art investment, just like, just like, you know, when you invest in a script and you need to know that, you know, how the script is performing in the stock market, same, same way, when you invest in art, you need to understand how is the performance of the artist, you know, how his or her artwork being perceived in the market, what can be the long-term, um, uh, you know, uh, demand in that sort of art. As you rightly said that in India, it's it's 90% contemporary. It's very interesting to know that because there's a huge part of India has a traditional form of art as a folk art, um, you know, which is, which is there, but still the contemporary and the modern, which is dominating the market. So the latest trend in the market is important to know before you invest in art. And why invest in art is because it, it gives you a diverse portfolio. You know, if you, yeah. if you are not talking about too much of liquidity in the short term, it is one of the best ways and uh, ways to invest, you know. So I think these are some of the things when you think about art as a long term investment, um, uh, one, you know, should consider that it is another form of investment vis-a-vis -vis which goes in parallel with stock market, property, mutual fund gold bullion cryptocurrency now yeah. <laughs> art is art is also a big 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 market for investment absolutely you know and uh, like you very rightly said that it is a long term investment um but what is interesting is that people who are actually um who like to engage with art they have another way to look at it because for instance uh, recently there was a client of mine and uh, uh, he the way he, you know, he decided that he was going to invest in art. He was part of a company, but he was going to, it's his own company actually, but he right, wanted right. to have a personal collection. Okay. And he was very clear that I am looking at it from the perspective that it's going to be long-term and it is something which I will be leaving for my children. Now that I found interesting, you know, because not many people like to look at it uh, from that angle. I've had uh, collectors come and say, my children uh, do not want to inherit my art collection, uh, but these are people who have, you know, like more than 500 works. And uh, <laughs> the children, uh, obviously after, you know, you've collected 10 to 20 works, you run out of space. That's the other thing, by the way, people tend to run yes. out of space and you need to find uh, how you're going to uh, keep the artworks. Uh, so this is one person who was, you know, who said he wanted to uh, invest in art so that uh, his daughter would inherit the collection and she would make money out of it which was which was interesting the uh, I have another person you know and what he does is and this I think is very relevant to the conversation we are having is because he does not have a huge budget but okay. he is absolutely passionate about it so what he does is he visits all these art exhibitions, art fairs, festivals, wherever he can, artist studios, all of that he does, he goes and attends. And he keeps a track of the market himself. Now, this is, this is a, you know, uh, what should I say? Uh, these are two ways to go about investing in art. Either you can work with a consultant who will do the market research, who is already in fact doing the market research and yes, uh, yes, keeping a track yes. of the market. Yeah. But then what they would do is also to uh, look at what you enjoy, what kind of art engages you. And uh, then they would try to source works for you within that budget. 
the other way is that uh, the the other person that i mentioned who likes to buy himself i think he's very happy doing that the the thrill of visiting shows and interacting with artists and finding out these stories which they have converted into their artwork i think that is something which makes art so um global you know anybody absolutely. can relate to that absolutely. that is amazing now i know artists do yes. not like their works to be sold at a you know discounted rate and i do kind of agree with them but some of them are passionate about their work finding a home and finding somebody who appreciates it and for those people in the west in fact there is a system where people uh, collect art on installments you know so every month they would uh, give out a certain i don't know if it's an emi <laughs> that, but that, 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 that's very smart that's very that's, smart yeah maybe. it's very common in europe yeah. by the way so i have artist friends who managed to sell works there in europe on an installment basis that's also a fantastic way to invest in art so you don't always need and that's the other thing you don't always need a very huge budget i think to invest in art you can always start small that's the beauty of it that art is available from you know a few thousand to lakhs and lakhs of rupees Indeed. now when we talk about diversifying the portfolio that's where the risk factor also comes in so you can mitigate the risk by mixing artworks which will then uh, you know so it is your portfolio which is going to fetch you the money not necessarily each work so how do you work with that so those are some of the ideas you know that uh, people can adopt and um, and see how to invest in art in a more safe way yes absolutely i mean i just want to pick up one point from you when you said that uh, when people go and buy art they they uh, want to have the story behind you yeah. and that's what connects uh, what i feel is that you know art is something you know it's more than the objective part it's it's a connection between the person who is seeing it and the person who is uh, doing it you know mm -hmm. and the moment and and i think to me that's that's a good piece of art which connects to both artists and the you, you can say investor or you can say the connoisseur and you can say the mm -hmm. onlookers and the observers and to 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 continue with the story uh, i think 2018 in um, we pallet had a stall in uh, wallad dubai mm -hmm. and behind that uh, there is a stall of bharat thakur and uh, and bharat thakur uh, you know i mean of course i mean in indian art context everybody knows about him but from a different point of view and i also used to know him from a different point of view because i used to be a avid yoga um, fan and is to go to bharat thakur so when i saw his stall and i saw and that particular um, uh, the displays art displays was very very uh, what should i say intriguing i was quite i mean i was quite intrigued and i i couldn't help but asking mr thakur that i mean you are an avid proponent of yoga and which is some sort of a spiritualism whereas your painting if i use a word come on word is very dark this those particular set of painting there are four yeah. or five and you know what he said ritika do you think that life is without darkness and and that's and that's how that's opened my mind is that you know you need to see you need to understand the philosophy behind uh, the creation of of an artist you know why he or she is doing that and what's the and that that's something which connects uh very much uh between uh, you know buyers and artists absolutely you know the the kind of um, engagement and the experience that you have when you uh when you engage with the artwork yes. uh that is always unique and it is so subjective there cannot be any objective interpretation of the work also so yeah it's very interesting that how people relate to different pieces of art and uh, there are people who love uh, dark uh, you know very dark pieces that's also uh, it's not for everyone i do realize that but i know which series you're talking about because bharat had done one series where it's it was a it was a personal journey for him and it was absolutely uh, the soul is tormented and uh, yeah being torn apart so uh, 
it's it's interesting that you brought it up also nalini you have been describing so nicely uh, that um, uh, you know what people should consider when they invest and what are the sort of things you know how what do a first uh, investor of art would should do you know while considering investment could you just a little elaborate because you are really really telling it so nicely you know so if if you can just give uh, some idea about the people saying that these are the few things that they consider when you when they are making their first art investment so i think the first and foremost uh, people uh, they should decide what kind of a budget are they looking for uh second thing i always advise my clients is to set aside the amount because it's very easy to get carried away you buy one you buy the next one and then then you are you know you buying works of the same artist i i know several people who just go on doing that they have 30 works 50 works by the same artist there has to be a purpose to that so any collection that one is building um it's good to have a direction it's good to have either a concept or a theme or it could be you know um you're looking at time period so it's chronological or you're covering a particular school um it's it's up to you so for everyone i know it's not easy to start in that way but slowly over a period of time i think uh, when you are engaging with art you become clearer on uh, what direction you want to go and what direction your um, collection should go the second thing is that if you notice uh, most large art collections are managed and driven by experts because it makes so much sense to have somebody who knows the field who knows the exactly. arts industry exactly. who knows the trends so you can be a part of the conversation obviously because if you're going to especially live with the work it's good to be invested in it you know to find that uh, it's something which moves exactly. you but if you're looking at building a larger art collection it is good to get some kind of advice at least you know some direction or where do you want to go and uh, have a conversation second thing is the the valuation the documentation this is the other thing which i always tell uh, everyone actually that make sure you document it well make sure you um um have all the pieces you know whatever you have all the paperwork is there so right from authenticity to provenance to uh, the quality of the work there's so many uh, factors which go into it and uh, i was also on the advisory committee of a museum of a, of a government museum earlier right. so i mentioned right. recently yeah. and that's the other thing i'm very passionate about the museums the museum going culture what we're doing in our museums and what we're doing with our public arts uh, in right. public spaces right, right. Uh, right. these two things again it's so relevant because uh, for collectors for them to even begin collecting it is important to see works and uh, one quick point that i will add here is that i had mentioned about the 2007-8 you know the recession that happened the good thing that came out of it is uh, before that uh, most collectors or buyers they were uh, relying on galleries and you know other people to tell them what to buy so there was no research they were not doing it for themselves but after that i think because many of them they suffered you know quite a bit and uh, of course the market collapsed and uh, they have now they are very invested in it mm. and uh, you know we talked about the uh, diversification of the portfolio and what kind of investment how much they should do um this is the other thing uh, before 2007 and i think people were putting using this as a primary source of investment which it should never be what one should do is look at it as 10 to 15% of their disposable income so that is the maximum that i would suggest people to invest in in art art is for everyone i think that's the other thing we have to keep uh, emphasizing that it's not just for the elite it's not just for a particular class of people anybody can enjoy it we need to invest more in public art right unless we have public art pieces how do you expect uh, everybody to become you know art savvy and uh, right right yeah that that culture has to be it has to be initiated so what i would the so uh, i mean uh, if you can give us an idea about what how are you expecting the 2022 market and maybe i can uh, add a little bit on the 
what are the trends that being predicted for 2022 market worldwide? Yeah, of course. So uh, one of the things that you mentioned was uh, there are going to be more auction houses also coming to India. And there are also going to be more Indian auction houses that are going to come up and be active in this current year. Um, in comparison, if you look at it, 2020, we said was uh, really a bad year, but uh, from 21, 22, already there has been a shift and the market has grown spectacularly. So while in 2020, what happened was that everyone was sitting at home, uh, not just sitting at home, but the lockdown was so um, devastating that people were obviously not thinking about the art. But once the critical phase got over, then there were a lot of people who wanted to beautify or, uh, you know, make their environment more aesthetic since so many people were working from home. Right. And right. art... Right. Then I think the conversation started with several online galleries. They were able to do spectacularly well. Um, right. They're continuing to do that. And uh, also, like you said, now the physical galleries are, they are back, you know, they are opening. Um, fortunately, in the meantime, they've also established their online platforms. So buyers have the option. So it's no longer limited uh, geographically. Uh, you have the option of walking into a gallery if that's what you're more comfortable, then you also have the option to uh, do more research and look at you know, uh, databases and uh, all of that uh, later on. So I believe that there are a couple of other international auction houses which will be entering the market this year or early next year, which should be good for the Indian art scene. Uh, globally, I seen that, uh, you know, I mean, what they're predicting is the same uh, in terms of hierarchy. It, it will still remain the same that US will be the top market followed by China and uh, then UK and France. That's how it goes, you know. And what is happening is that around towards the end of 2021 and it was the first half of 2022, you know, which talks about that public auction sales of fine and decorative arts and antiques rose by 47% yeah. to 2020, which is, which is very, very exciting and encouraging and reaching an estimated 26.3 billion. So, I mean, still, as I said, the market dominates that US markets and the private sales in the auction sector has also increased and a steady uptake with around 32% reaching an US 4.1 billion. This is sometime towards the end of 2021 to first uh, few months of 2022. Huh. So market is, is, is um, you know, sort of being a bit- Looking up, uh, yes. Yes, uh, market yeah. is looking up. And, and there has been a lot of post-war and contemporary arts, as, as you are rightly saying, is dominating the worldwide scenario. And basically what they're saying is that art which have been produced in the last 20 years are getting a lot of attention, uh, you know, in terms of conservation and long-term investment point of view. And they were also mentioned in your news that there is a renewed interest in the figurative part of art, you know? So that is something, an interesting trend so far the type of art that uh, one is looking at at the 2022. Still, physical uh, platforms will have its own place, but along with that simultaneously, the digital market, the online platform is taking a um, substantial percentage of the um, art market, and which, which is, of course, uh, in the years to come, will be a dominant uh, probably a characteristics, you know, so how the two markets work parallelly. So I think, I think um, uh, these are some of the new trends, not new trends, are the emerging trends in 2022. And uh, experts feel that the market is going to come back and it is looking up and probably we, if things work out well and uh, we might reach uh, the previous site. So right now what is happening is the hybrid way of working is going to get more popular. And this offers, uh, like we said earlier, that it's going to give more options to buyers and collectors as well. Um, in closing, all I want to say is that, you know, that uh, if you want to invest in art, start small, 
and uh, don't let it stop you i think you know it's uh, we sometimes overthink things but if there is if you do have some amount of disposable income some amount of uh, you know money that you would like to invest in art uh, do go about it start in a small way see how you uh, feel about it and then you can continue to uh, go along of course auction records and all of that data art price art net all of these we are fortunate that we have uh, access to so many uh, digital archives and uh, you know information and data points which one can refer to and uh, make smart decisions so it's for everyone yeah you are absolutely right few take away points is that um uh, you need to know the market uh, when you invest in art at least little bit of research and understanding number 2 is that the first time investors it will be helpful to talk to the experts and and to get to know a little bit of idea number 3 is that uh, you need to understand the market uh, well before investing into it and if you only have quite a bit of disposable income after you invest in the uh, in those assets which are more liquid because art is not that liquid an asset you have to think about it in a long term perspective so in that case art is a fantastic investment if you have more to spare in the market number 2 uh, number 3 is that market market is improving market is improving throughout the world and in india as well so i mean the whatever the deep we felt in last few uh, last two years it's it's everybody is upbeat and they're saying that you know the worst is over and the market is moving up maybe this is a time you know and this is a very classical theory about investment when the market starts move, uh, going up that's the best time to invest you know a little less mm-hmm. not very high market so the same applies to art market as well the market yeah. has just started moving you know so the entry <laughs> points are very very you know affordable and uh, conducive for investing in art that's an absolutely, absolutely good point that you said uh, ritvika uh, so as we wind up i'm going to talk, talk just a little bit about what i do apart from uh, i know they've put down nalli malviya as uh, the founder of uh, art scene india which is a website that i have apart from that i have a consultancy which is nalli malviya consultants and uh, as part of that um i do uh, corporate art collections you know and even for individuals if they look at uh, investing in art so we provide advice for them um and the other thing is of course the public art which i am so passionate about <laughs> i'm just looking for uh, somebody to sponsor uh, you know art piece and uh, you to have it in a public space where more people can engage with it and children can play around it and it could be kinetic it could be a sculpture it could be an installation or um, anything which just moves you know and it becomes a cultural and a vibrant space for everyone to come and uh, sort of okay. collect so <laughs> absolutely uh, until next time then yes yes thank you so so much and and it's 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 really interesting to uh, have this discussion Thank you, Ritika. It was a pleasure talking to you. It I was a pleasure so talking to you and, as well. Uh, yeah, and to DLC for uh, to, making to, this to, possible. To set up such Very happy about such, that. Such platform. It's it's really we feel privileged and honored. I know. Right. Thank you. Then have a lovely day. Bye bye.